Stop chatting with your AI. Seriously, if you're using ChatGPT to summarize emails and create PDFs, you're missing out on one of the major shifts that's happening in the industry right now. We're moving from generative AI, which just talks to you, to agentic AI, which actually does stuff for you. Recently in my channel, I've been using tools like Cursor and Perplexly, uh, and there's a real reason behind that as well. We're at the early stage of a massive shift in the industry. So today on Talk Tech to Me, we're breaking down agentic AI. And in particular, we're looking at things at MCP protocol and how you can unlock them to save hours of your life. So let's get into it. Okay, simple definition first. Generative AI is reactive. It gives you, a, you give it a prompt, it gives you text, code or image then in return. It's a content creator. Agentic AI is proactive. It perceives its environment, reasons through a problem and takes actions to solve that problem. It's essentially an employee. Think of it like this. If you ask ChatGPT, find me chief flights to London. It's going to give you a list of text and you have to go into each one of them, read them and click on the individual links to go to the individual websites and find out what it's trying to do. If you ask an agentic AI agent, same thing, it's going to go to Expedia, it's going to go to all the different sort of sky scanner web and websites. It's going to check your calendar and it's going to find flights that suit you and suit you and suits your calendar then as well. Then it's going to book them using your credit card then as well. The difference isn't intelligence, it's agency. It's the permission to act upon what you want it to do. So how does it do this? Well, it does it using three stages then as well. The first step is perception. The AI doesn't just read your prompt, it sees it. So it has tools available to it. In my previous video, I mentioned MCP Model Context Protocol. And this is an example of a suite of tools that your agentic AI can use to complete tasks then as well. So first off, it sees what the prompt is, it understands it, and then it has these tools available, um, like you know Google Drive, Slack, uh, there's been so many of them come out recently as well, even like Booking.com and Kayak and those kind of websites then as well. Which then brings it to the next step then as well. The next step is reasoning. So it breaks down the goal of what you're trying to do into more manageable steps then as well. Think of giving a prompt like, build me a website to do X, Y, Z. First of all, it's going to say you're going to need to write the HTML first. Then second stage is you're going to need CSS and style it. And then third stage is you're going to debug it then as well. So the reasoning stage, it does all the planning. And then the third stage or the action stage is where the magic happens. So this is where it sees the tools and it has made a plan and then it starts executing what it has done. No longer is it just drafting emails for you. It's drafting them and sending them based upon a set criteria then as well. This is all good talking about in theory. Let's get into some examples. Okay, the first example here, I'm going to use Google's new anti-gravity studio. Uh, I'm going to make a whole video on this separately then as well. So don't get too bogged down with the details then as well, what I'm trying to do here. I've heavily sped up this video for the purposes of this then as well. The, the basic prompt I give it was this. Uh, build me a website that will list all the new gyms in the UK. Essentially, it's a, a directory website. And I actually start by building the agent first of all, and then I build the website, and then I build a second agent then uh, at the end. So this first agent essentially is going to be a search agent. It's going to scour the internet because it's Google based. It has full access to the Google search engine then as well. And it's going to look for gyms that are new in the UK. So the criteria of this is gyms based in the UK, either brand new or coming soon then as well. So it's going to go off and it's going to do a data script for me. It's going to find all this information for me. And this agent essentially is reusable. I can call upon this agent as and whenever I want. Uh, you can see it's running away here in the background. Uh, I click accept all, accept all, accept all. There's a few dependencies missing from my machine. You can see here at the minute then as well, it's done me up uh, an implementation plan. Um, so it's going to tell me the steps it's going to do. So this is the, the reasoning behind it. Because this is the first time, I, I want to read through the plan. I want to make sure I'm happy with the plan because this will be used over and over again. So if I wanted to make any tweaks or adjustment to what this agent is doing, this is where I do it. But from what I can see, it's all looking pretty good, pretty straightforward. This is quite a, a simple one. Um, the agent essentially all it's doing is going out to Google. Something in the past would have required manual intervention, sort of going to Google itself and typing in new gyms in the UK and then trying to sift through that information, sort of find what you want from that then as well. The second stage of this is I wanted to build me a website that's going to list this information then as well. So. We move back into anti-gravity here and I'm going to give it a new prompt. Oh, it actually required a wee plugin browser as well. Wow, 
And there you see, it's actually built a website for me as well. So uh, a HTMS, CSS, uh, Node.js website here. And you can see straight away, whenever it has that little blue square on the screen, that is the agent actually itself doing things. I'm not typing in anything here. It is essentially testing its own code that it has written. Uh, I am pretty much a passenger on this journey then as well. Now it does get stuck here for a little while because it actually missed one of its fields and it goes through a bit of a loop and you know it thought it's done something wrong and so it goes back in, it iterates a bit more then as well until it eventually figures out its own mistake and then comes back in again. But you can see we're what, two minutes in here and it's built a website, the agent has retrieved the information for the internet and it's already published it then as well and now it's testing the information that is actually uploaded then as well. I'll give it another wee minute here and it will eventually successfully test on what is actually done. But you can see there, it's a really slick, clean, nice looking website then as well. And absolutely no code involved at all. Now, here we go, second time around. And then it's gonna test the, its output then as well. You can see it's put a URL in for the images there. And there you can see, uh, the test one's already been uploaded. Perfect, so now that's working right. Um, it's gonna move on hopefully to the last stage then as well where you know it has it all ready to go for me. Now, next, I wanted to get me to build a second agent then as well. I, I back to anti-gravity, back into the Agent Explorer, and this second agent that I wanted to build then is gonna to be to email my subscriber list whenever a new gym is either created, comes online, or you know gets uploaded to the website then as well. So imagine you are running this website and you want to essentially notify your customer base or your fan base whenever a new um, gym is sort of coming uh, to somewhere in the UK then as well. Um, it will essentially do this for you. If there's been a recent upload then as well from the first agent, it's populated the website. It's gonna essentially then kick off, it's gonna open up your Gmail. It's gonna find out the, the, the list that you talked about in the past, your subscriber list or you know your mailing list then as well. And it's gonna automatically send an email out to one of them, uh, to all of them then as well, with the information from that. Again, two lines of text to build this agent. It does all its own testing as well. You see near the end of this video here then as well, it does two or three rounds of sort of iterative testing where you know it tries to fire off the email and does everything right up to the point where it actually sends the email because I didn't give it credentials and permission to send on my Gmail because it'll be sending out absolute junk to absolute nobody. I don't have a subscriber list and this website is not live. But I let it think it was going to do just to test to see how far it would go. And to be honest, this was 99% of the way there. And if I had to give it my API, my credentials, it would have done it for me. You're actually also able to live view what's going on. You see there on the right-hand side, open up that sort of sub-window then as well. So even though it's coding and show me what's going on here then as well, you can still see the back end, you can still see it, it, it working then at the same time then as well. Hopefully that made a lot of sense. On to the next example. Now, in this next example, I'm going to use Google EA Studio. And I'm going to do something which has only recently been available through Gemini 3. I'm going to give it an image and I'm going to give it a small prompt. And essentially the image is going to be a really crude sketch I done on my tablet of the solar system. And it's going to have the sun, it's going to have the earth, it's going to have the moon, and it's going to show the difference between day and night cycles on the moon as it sort of spins around the moon and as to where the moon is in relation to the, to the sun. I was asked this by my five-year-old and instead of trying to explain to them, I grew out a crude sketch and it was hard to bring it to life. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give it to Gemini, um, sorry, Google AI Studio, Gemini 3. I'm going to give it my image and I'm going to give it a very simple prompt. So build a DNA simulator to show the moon reflecting sunlight and then let's go around the earth. I select the image then as well and off it goes. So this is another example of agentic AI where um, ChatGPT could only sort of tell you about it or it could maybe draw you a picture. This essentially is gonna build a working simulator for me and it's gonna do it within a minute or so then as well. So essentially it's building a very small game. And here we are, it's interactive, it has controls and it built it within a couple of seconds then as well. And there you can see anytime you can stop it, you can pause it, you can go back and forth then as well. and. That was built within a minute. I have no coding experience. I, I do not know how to design these things. I was a really crude sketch that I had done. I'll show it on screen here. I done that on my tablet in about 30 seconds, trying to explain it to my five-year-old. And here you have it working live as an interactive model. On to the next example. Now, in this example, I am gonna use 
Perplexity's new browser called Comet. And Comet essentially is a AI first browser. I made a whole video on Perplexity and Comet and all the amazing things it can do. Um, but I'm going to use the inbuilt agentic AI that it has inside that then as well. And it was really simple. Opened up the assistant on the right hand side and I gave it a fairly complex prompt. I want to go to see Biffy Clyro, amazing Scottish rock band. And they're playing in the O2 Arena in January. I know that much. I basically tell it that I want you to book me tickets to the concert, flights and hotel then as well. Sometime in January for two adults. And just let it work away. Uh, a bit like... Um, the anti-gravity shoe, you can see there on screen, the lovely little sort of blue hash around the outside as well. That means that the Agentic AI is actually working on the browser. I'm not clicking anything here. You can see where my mouse is. It's static 99% of the time, but it's the Agentic AI. It essentially is going through here. It's clicking through the website. It's finding me seats, it's finding me dates, and eventually does get to the point where, you know, it finds me concert tickets then as well. Um, Skip on a little bit, you can see where it starts looking at hotels, it starts looking at flights then as well, and it eventually gets me to a point where it has found flights, hotel, and accommodation then as well. And it brings me to the pages for all of them where it's actually it's ready to book them for me. Why does it not book them? Because I didn't give him my credit card information. I'm not that crazy. Uh, as much faith as I have in all this, you can see there at the end, I flick through all the three tabs and it has them all sitting ready to go. Yeah. If you give it access to your credit card, it will book them for you. I like that wee bit of human oversight, so I didn't just give it full control to do that as well, but you can see straight away here, it's like having your own sort of travel agent or personal assistant, where essentially you tell it roughly what you want, the rough dates of many people, and it does all the legwork for you. If you want to get really particular, you can give it more constraints and more controls and say, you know, I want to go on these exact dates, I want to fly from these exact airports, but hey, there's three examples of agentic AI making my life a lot easier. On to the conclusion. So here you are, 2025, and the first proper agentic AI is up and running. Uh, MCP is growing day by day. So the number of things that an MCP server can connect to is growing exponentially. We're starting to see ChatGPT 5.0 is actually already including them inside it now. So instead of having to spin up a separate MCP server, connect it to all these different things, uh, It'll connect to them just using the at symbol then as well. We've seen some really cool examples at their last live stream where you can just do at Spotify and it brings it straight in. But the, the catalog or the suite of what MCP and what Agentic AI can connect to, it's expanding all the time then as well. I think by this time next year, it's gonna be fully connected to pretty much everything in our lives. And it's gonna be done to a level where you won't need developers. Essentially anybody at home can do it with very, very basic commands then as well. So that was a whistle stop to our Agentic AI. So you need to stop prompting AI and getting it to just give you raw text then as well. Start leveraging Agentic AI to do all the legwork for you then as well. I hope you enjoyed that video. I've been Dan Murphy. I love making these things and I've been using Agentic AI a lot. I'll see you on the next one. Please like and subscribe to my channel for more content. Have a good day everybody. Bye bye.